Super Mario Brothers, The Legend of Zelda, Pokemon. These names have lived on for decades, and they're known around the world. These names are staples in the gaming industry. Where did these games come from, and how did they rise to such fame? One word, Nintendo. In 1985, Nintendo released a Nintendo Entertainment System in North America, which saved the gaming industry from the game crash of 83 and changed pop culture forever. This triumph in America not only saved Nintendo from the tragedy of failing as a toy company, it also paved the way for many more game consoles to come. I'm Zachary Go. And I'm Hunter Jacobson. And this is the triumph and tragedy of the rise of Nintendo. Many people know Nintendo as the behemoth gaming company that they own today, but its history dates back all the way to September 23, 1889 in Kyoto, Japan, with a man named Fushiro Yamauchi. Yamauchi founded Nintendo as Nintendo Kopai. Nintendo produced Hanafuda cards, small plastic cards used for various games of gambling. This is why the word Nintendo roughly translates to leave luck to heaven. In 1956, Fusuhiro Yamauchi passed Nintendo Kopai onto his grandson, Hiroshi Yamauchi. Nintendo did well at first, but by 1963 and 64, people had lost interest in Hanafuda, and Nintendo's stock fell from 900 yen to 60 yen. In 1977, Nintendo released their first game console, a Pong clone called the Color TV Game 6, released only in Japan. Pong, created by Alan Alcorn, was the beginning of a new era for gaming. Many companies made clones of Pong in an attempt to cash in on the craze, and Nintendo was no different. On July 15, 1983, Nintendo released the Nintendo Family Computer, or Famicom, in Japan. The Famicom was extremely successful, selling over 2.5 million units by 1984. Meanwhile, North America was experiencing a major crash in the gaming industry, known as the Game Crash of 83, where Atari's bad quality control led to the creation of appalling games such as E.T. and a horrible Pac-Man port. This made people across America lose interest in video games. The Game Crash of 82 would have ended gaming if it wasn't for Nintendo. The losing success in Japan led Nintendo to turn to the American market, because Nintendo knew that of the distaste of gaming at the time, they loot packages of Famicom to appeal to the new audiences. The Nintendo Entertainment System was released in America on October 18, 1985. The NES included a robotic operating buddy, or ROB for short, which helped market it as a toy instead of a gaming system. The NES included a front-loading cartridge slot somewhere to VHS tape players, marketing the console as a home appliance. The NES sold a total of 61 million units. While Nintendo was triumphing in the States, another game company called Sega tried to overthrow Nintendo as the king of the gaming industry, releasing the SG-1000 on July 15, 1983, the same day as the Famicom. However, it flopped due to the current abundance of consoles in the market. Sega remained persistent and struck again in 1986 with the Sega Master System, which was a failure everywhere except Europe. Sega still wasn't finished with Nintendo, and they released Sega Mega Drive or Sega Genesis in North America to rival Nintendo's NES on August 14, 1989. Genesis was a powerful 16-bit system that had a harsh advertising campaign that targeted Nintendo, with the slogan, Genesis does what Nintendo. On November 21, 1990, Nintendo released the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, or SNES, which was a rival of the Genesis. The SNES was more powerful than the Genesis and had better quality games such as Super Mario World and Star Fox. The SNES was a big hit, hurting Sega's Genesis. Sega launched many peripherals to keep the Genesis alive, such as the Sega CD and the Sega 32X, who both flopped in the gaming market. While the Genesis was Sega's high point, it was the console that pushed Sega down a slope that never ended. On April 21st, 1989, Nintendo released the Game Boy, known among the gaming community as the Dot Matrix Game, or DMG. It was a massive success selling its entire stock upon release. The Game Boy triumphed over its rivals, the Sega Game Gear and the Atari Lynx. Though both the Lynx and the Game Gear were backlit had color screens, the DMG's low price and quality games, such as Tetris and Super Mario Land, made the Game Boy the top selling handheld gaming console of its generation. The Game Boy was a handheld console that pushed Nintendo to the spot of the most successful handheld console developer. Nintendo has stayed up in that spot from the launch of the Game Boy 2 today, where Nintendo reigned supreme above the handheld market. On May 28, 1991, Nintendo wanted to create a CD add-on for the Super Nintendo, so they partnered with Sony to create the peripheral, the Nintendo PlayStation. However, Nintendo and Sony didn't get along in development, causing the project to fail. Sony didn't want to waste other hard work, so on December 3, 1994, Sony entered the console wars with the Sony PlayStation. Tragically for Nintendo, the Sony PlayStation was a big hit, selling 102 million units worldwide, stealing a part of Nintendo's customers. Nintendo had a lot of trust in Gunpei Yokoi.
Koi created the Game & Watch and the Game Boy, two Nintendo Triumphs. In 1995, the Koi released a new portable system, the Virtual Boy, a red and black 3D handheld console. The Virtual Boy's eye-training visuals led to it to flop horribly, selling only around 770,000 units worldwide and is still Nintendo's worst-selling console. On August 15, 1996, shortly after the flop of the Virtual Boy, Gunpei Koi left Nintendo stating, After graduating from university, I was at Nintendo the entire time working on playthings, but at the 55-year-old juncture, I thought about working at a job that would allow me even more freedom for my ideas. This was a huge tragedy for Nintendo, as Okoi was the person who pushed to create games, and also the one who came up with many game ideas. On September 26, 1996, Nintendo released the Nintendo 64, which was a major leap for the gaming industry. It solidified 3D gaming, with titles such as Super Mario 64 and The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, and sold 32.9 million units worldwide. Though it didn't beat Sony's PlayStation, the N64 was still a triumph for Nintendo. On September 9, 1999, Sega released the Sega Dreamcast, which sold well for the time it was on shelves before the Sony PlayStation 2 released on March 4, 2000. The PS2 became the best-selling console of all time, selling 158 million units worldwide, causing Sega to stop developing consoles on March 31, 2001. This was a triumph for Nintendo because it meant less competition in the console wars. On September 14, 2001, Nintendo released the Nintendo GameCube, which sold 22 million units worldwide. Though it was the least popular system in its generation, the GameCube is still loved by many today. Then, on November 15, 2001, Microsoft officially released the Xbox to join the console wars, tragically filling the void that Sega had left behind. With the success of the Game Boy, Nintendo decided to continue the line in late 1998 with the Game Boy Color, a more powerful Game Boy with a color scheme that was also backwards compatible with the original Game Boy game. The original Game Boy and the Game Boy Color sold a combined total of 118.69 million units, making them the third best-selling console of all time. Following the GBC, Nintendo made a new handheld, the Game Boy Advance, three years later on March 21, 2001 in North America. The GBA was a backwards compatible powerful 32-bit system that sold over 81.5 million units. Two years after the GBA, Nintendo released the Game Boy Advance Special, or GBA SP, a front-lit system that could fold like a flip phone and was also backwards compatible. The SP sold over 43.5 million units. The SP's frontlet screen made handheld gaming easier in places with little light. IGN called this a step in the right direction for Nintendo. Next came the successor to the Game Boy line, the Nintendo Dual Screen, or DS, which was released in late 2004. The DS could also play GBA games, and it sold a total of over 154 million units, making it the second best-selling game console of all time. The DS had two screens, one of them being a touchscreen, and included the new Nintendo Wi-Fi connection server. The DS was one of Nintendo's biggest hits. They continued the DS line with the DS Lite in June of 2006 and the DSi in November of 2008. The DS Lite had the same format as the DS, but was slimmer, brighter, and more lightweight, and sold nearly 94 million units. Next came the DSi, which removed backwards compatibility in exchange for a built-in camera and had its own online shop, the Nintendo DSi Shop. The DSi was followed by a larger DSi, the DSi XL, in November of 2009. The two sold a combined total of 41 million units. Nintendo then released the Nintendo 3DS in March of 2011. It included two new features, the ability to play games in 3D and an analog control stick. The 3DS itself sold over 26 million units and can still be found on some shelves today. After this, Nintendo decided to release the Nintendo 2DS in October of 2013. The 2DS was a cheaper alternative to the 3DS that didn't fold, but could still play 3DS games and original DS games. It sold about 9.7 million units and can still be found on store shelves today. On November 19, 2006, Nintendo Wii, a motion-controlled console, released. Though Sony's PS3 and Microsoft's Xbox 360 were both high definition and extremely powerful, the Wii outsold both of them due to its motion controls being extremely innovative. The Wii became the fifth best-selling console ever, selling 101.63 million units worldwide. On November 28, 2012, Nintendo struck again with the Wii U, which was a hot mess and a failure, selling only 13.56 million units. However, on March 3, 2017, Nintendo released a new console, the Nintendo Switch. The Switch was a hybrid console that can be played on a TV or portably. It was a success, selling over 32 million units so far and greatly helping Nintendo recover from the failure of the Wii U. In 1985, Nintendo released the Nintendo Entertainment System in North America, which saved the gaming industry from the Game Crash of 83 and changed pop culture forever. This triumph in America not only saved Nintendo from the tragedy of failing as a toy company, it also paved the way for many more game consoles to come. This was a triumph and tragedy in the rise of Nintendo. Thank you for watching this documentary, and thank you for your time. Thank you.